Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you what is titled Speaking the Wisdom of God. Tell somebody, Speaking the Wisdom of God. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Some of you are not still talking. Do we need to encourage you to speak? Come on. Say it again. Speaking the wisdom of God. Remember, the topic is actually talking about speaking. Speaking the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God can be spoken. It is not something that you keep in your mind. It is something that you actually speak. So now we title it, Speaking the Wisdom of God. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 3. We'll begin from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 16. Ephesians 3, okay, it's on the screen. It says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Listen, you, there is the outer man and there is the inner man. The one you are seeing is the outer man. Are you following? The one inside you is the inner man. And it's the inner man that guides your life. It is the inner man that leads you in the things that you do. He says that Christ, okay, he says that he will grant you, no, go back to verse 16, 16, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Call on, next verse. Next verse. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, next, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Isn't that a problem? He's telling you to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. That is not today. That he might be filled with all the fullness of God. God wants you to be filled with all the full load of God. There is the fullness of God that can you experience in your own life. Praise God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Actually, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Ephesians 5.18 Ephesians 5.18 Can we read together? I want to go. Again, want to go. It says be filled with the Spirit. Listen, it is not God's responsibility to fill you with his spirit. I'll say it again. It is not God's responsibility to fill you with your spirit. He says you be filled with the spirit. And interestingly, if you have a good King James Bible, you are going to see a rendering under this verse. It's going to tell you be being filled with the spirit. Meaning that the fullness of the spirit is not a one day experience. It is something that is continual. The same way you eat food and you are full today. If you eat today, will you eat tomorrow? Can you eat all the food today for one week? Is it possible? The same thing with the Spirit. You cannot be filled with the Spirit today. And you think tomorrow, you don't need to be filled with the Spirit. It's a lie. You've got to be being filled with the Spirit. Be being filled with the Spirit. So the question is, how do you get filled with the Spirit? Notice, it is the semicolon right there. Can you see it? Not a full stop. Next verse. Let's look at it now. It says, let's read one to go. Hold on. Write number one. How to be filled with the Spirit. Number one, speaking. 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 But now, who are you speaking to? Who are you speaking to? Look at it. Who are you speaking to? I'm talking to me. Imagine if somebody saw you talking and you are the only one. They would think you are crazy. 
Somebody asks you, are you mad? But the Bible says, speak to yourself, talk to yourself. How? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Isn't it amazing that you can speak psalms, speak hymns, and speak spiritual songs? He says, speak them. So for instance, you take Psalm 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Yay! Though I walk through the shadow of dark and blacks, I fear no evil. When the word of God is filled in your spirit, when you speak the word of God to yourself, you are full of the spirit. Can you say amen? Now, the second one is number two, singing. Tell somebody singing. The first one is what? The second one is what? Singing. It says singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Notice, this singing, you must not do it like epicenter music with your technicalities. It says sing and make melody. So now, I go like this. Somebody say, Tell the person, I'm not singing to you. I'm singing to the Lord. He says, Make your melody in your heart to the Lord. In the Lord, make melody. Make melody. Just make melody. Tell somebody, make melody. In your heart to the Lord. And how do you do it? Singing. Whether you are washing the bathroom, whether you are in the toilet, whether you are in the kitchen, whether you are in the car, he says sing. Sometimes if you need to, you put song on your phone or your laptop on the TV, put it that can encourage you to sing. He says singing to yourself. Singing and making melody in your heart. Make melody. Tell somebody make melody. The melody does not need to have arrangements. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? It doesn't need to have arrangement. Just make the melody in your heart to the Lord. Praise God. Now notice, semicolon. Next verse. Number three, giving thanks. Giving thanks. For how many things? For how many things? Come on, talk to me. For how many things? It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You must learn to give thanks. Say, Father, thank you today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for strength. It says, thank you for all things. For all things. Thank you for your phone. Thank you for your house. Thank you for your school. Thank you school for everything, even the food you are eating. It says, thank you. You know, sometimes people think that it is so difficult to be filled with the Spirit. They think it's so hard. But I'll show you the principle. Very simple. Now, is there a full stop? Is there a full stop? Now, the next one is what? Number four, submitting. Let me tell you why. It says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Why is it saying that? Because when you start speaking the word, when you start singing the word, and when you start giving thanks, it's as though you are not in this world anymore. It's as though you are right now in heaven. You feel on top of the world. In that atmosphere, in all of those, it says submit. Are you seeing that? Because sometimes some people, they have some spiritual experience and they fail to submit. He says, in all of this, submit yourself to one another in the fear of God. Praise God. This is how to be filled with the Spirit. I'm telling you, speaking, singing, giving thanks, and submitting. That's all. Say the first one. Number one. Two. Third. The fourth one. I mean, if there's nothing you learn from this service today, don't forget this one. Don't forget this one. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. We're talking about speaking the wisdom of God. It says, follow after charity. The word is actually love because it's the, it's the Greek word agape, which means love. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. Next. 
for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God for no man understands him how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries he speaks what he speaks what do you know that your life is mysterious do you know let me ask you a question who are you going to marry is a mystery what job are you going to have is a mystery what business should you do is a mystery he says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speak not unto men but unto god for no man understands him how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries mysteries about his health mysteries about his business mysteries about his future mysteries about his life he speaks mysteries the bible says next verse he says but he that prophesied speaketh unto men for edification and exhortation and comfort listen new testament prophecy is these three things any prophecy that does not give you exhortation edification and comfort throw it to the dustbin i hear what i'm saying somebody comes to you and say hmm, i smell sin i smell sin in this place throw it in the dustbin that does not give edification no exhortation no comfort and every christian is supposed to prophesy there are two different types of prophecy there is prophecy in the office of the prophet and there is the gift of prophecy for every christian i get the point now let me explain the difference if i function in the office of a prophet and i come to him and tell him specific events because the office of a prophet is backed with revelation and visions that the lord shows him and then he can begin to say events to get your attention but that is not even the prophecy so if i call your phone number it's not the prophecy i get to the point he's trying to get your attention because other people will not believe so he tells you event tells you about your life tells you what happened last week and then the prophecy is inside the message so if you are not smart you'll be bamboozled by the accuracy of the prophecy and miss the prophecy but now in the gift of prophesying i come to you and say brother god said to me that this week will be blessed when i say that he'll be edified he'll be comforted i may not have any revelation i you getting the point i may not have it but he got it he got the revelation he was encouraged by it that's the gift of prophecy say this with me say i can prophesy say i can prophesy every christian is supposed to prophesy you prophesy to your life you know i um uh, ago we had a teaching called um we we read a book called um charting the course of your life with the gift of prophecy i'm telling you if you know how to use the gift of prophecy there's nothing in this world that can stop you god said to ezekiel he says can these dry bones live you know what he said he said god only you knows god says no he says prophesy to these dry bones he says oh ye dry bones hear the word of the lord he says i command flesh to come to you and it was so who prophesied was it god or ezekiel ezekiel did it you can prophesy to your kitchen you can prophesy to your life you can even prophesy about the person you want to marry tomorrow you've got to start today don't wait until you clock 30 or you clock 45 or your mother starts disturbing you then you start saying hmm, let me start calculating all these guests that are with me now which i should like pick no don't get to that point don't get to that point right now start prophesying what you want to experience what type of husband do you want to have start prophesying it 
Listen, I'm not saying that you should start saying, Father, this lady must be my wife in Jesus' name. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, have a picture of the type of family you want. Have a picture of the type of job you want. Have a picture of the type of life you want. And start speaking it. I told somebody one time, I said, if you mean saying it a thousand times, say it a thousand times. For instance, let's say you are sick, you have taken drugs, nothing is changing. What are you wasting your time for? Start speaking to yourself. Say, in the name of Jesus, I walk in health. In the name of Jesus, I walk in health. The life of God is in me. Are you saying that? Listen, you may say it the first time, it may sound foolish. Say it the second time. Say it the third time. Say it the hundred time. In fact, if it means say it one thousand times, say it one thousand times. And then you start seeing the results. I'm telling you, because remember, as you are speaking, you are building, you are building, you are building. The Bible says, when the cloud is full of rain, they empty themselves. So your cloud is building. Until it's full, there will be no rain. Are you following? We were reading uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Okay, now drop down to, to verse 27, verse 27. It says, if any man speaks the unknown tongue, let it be by two or by the most three. And that by cause, let one interpret. Hold on. Verse 1 to 4 is different from verse 27 to 28 for instance when we speak in church when we speak in tongues in church some people say why are they speaking in tongues nobody is interpreting they are reading verse 27 for instance let's say um this brother is speaking in tongues she's speaking in tongues he's speaking in tongues right the bible says let one interpret so what if there's no interpreter next verse read one to go uh, and so most of the time they put full stop in this place He's talking about the congregation. So for instance, I came here this morning, I'm talking to the church, and I start speaking in tongues. I spoke in tongues for 30 minutes. You'll be wondering, what type of pastor is this one? Because he didn't interpret, he didn't tell the meaning, he's a barbarian to you, you're a barbarian to him. Makes no sense. Are you seeing that? So, if I'm going to speak in tongues to the church, I must have the interpretation if there is no interpretation as I'm on my chair worshipping God I speak to myself and to God in tongues are you following? are you following? Uh -huh. so you've got to understand the difference so you don't get confused tell somebody we're going somewhere we're going somewhere 1 Corinthians chapter 2 want to go read okay it's on the screen want to go read uh oh now it tells us in first corinthians 14 that when a man speaks the unknown tongue he speaks not unto men but unto god right he says that this man speaks mysteries speaks mysteries now this verse say but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory next which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the Lord of glory next but as it is written hey this one many Christians like this verse I'll show you something it says as okay let's read together I want to go Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh boy, the guy said, "God, nobody has seen this thing. I 
eyes have not seen. He has not heard it. Okay, the next verse. But he says, But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Listen, there's no Christian that speaks in tongues that did not see his future before he entered it. Listen, this church today, we entered it already before we started. I'm telling you, the future that I will live tomorrow, I'll speak it now because I've got to prepare the pathway so that the Bible says God will make the crooked path straight. So it doesn't matter what will come against you. You tell the devil, throw your best shots. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Bible didn't say that no weapon will come. He didn't say it. He didn't say you will not have challenges. He never said it. He didn't say there will be no problems in your life. He never said it. He never said that you will never be sick. He never said it. But no weapon, no weapon from the days me shall what? Simple. In fact, anyone that tries to destroy your life, it will turn for your double promotion. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 1, verse 7 to 14, it says, The more they have feeded the children of Israel, the more they multiplied and grew. So, times of affliction is time of growth, it's time of multiplication. Listen, don't look at your life today and think that nothing good can come out of it. No, no. Think about the future. Think about the future. You may not have money today, but you have tomorrow. I'm telling you. I am telling you. You may open your pocket, everything is empty inside. Things will change. Why? Because you are holding on to the word of God. And the word of God will never fail. God's word will never fail. Can you say amen? Oh, you can see it on the screen. Exodus 1.12. Thank you very much. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. There is the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God next which God also will speak not the words by man's wisdom teach it but which the Holy Ghost teach it comparing spiritual things with spiritual next but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know it, because they are spiritually discerned. You know something? When you are doing spiritual things, you can only understand it spiritually. The carnal man, it doesn't make sense. How can I be speaking in tongues? Something I don't understand doesn't make sense. But if you want to have spiritual things, you've got to do spiritual things. He says, but he that is spiritual, judgeth of things, yet he himself is judgeth of no man. Praise God. I said, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Say God's word is working in me. Say God's word is working in me. Say God's word is working in me. How will you make it in life? It is a secret. Tell somebody it's a secret. Who will you marry? Is a what? Who is going to help you? It is a what? When will your door open? It is a what? What business should you do? It is a what? Everything about your life is a what? So when we God open your secret fire, 
Wait. <laughs> when? When will God open your secret fire? First Corinthians 14, verse 2. First Corinthians 14, verse 2. Read one to go. So there's there was mystery inside him all this while. He did not know it, he never spoke it. But when he starts speaking in tongues, he starts to open the secret files. He starts to speak the secret. Then the angels start to hear it. They understand what he's saying. Then they start to go in action to cause those things he's saying to come to pass. That's what I'm telling you. Now, the Bible says that when you speak in tongues, you are speaking what? When, and, it's, and this mystery you are speaking is called what? What is it called? What is it called? It's called the wisdom of God. Bible says we speak the, the wisdom of God in a mystery. Are you following? I'll go again. When I speak in tongues, what am I speaking? When I speak in tongues, what am I speaking? Mysteries. When I speak mysteries, what am I speaking? Let's go again. When I speak in tongues, what am I speaking? When I speak mysteries, what am I speaking? So now let's jump. When I speak in tongues, what am I speaking? Yes. So somebody saying, how do you speak the wisdom of God? Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Because in those tongues is the secret inside. I'm telling you. Listen, you will speak your future now. And the more you spend time speaking in tongues, the more things are arranged for you effortlessly you just find yourself in the right place at the right time listen you do not know the right place at the right time you don't know it but the spirit knows so when you are speaking what he is speaking you are conditioning your spirit in alignment to the spirit of god and everything is working working for your advantage can you say amen and even if the devil comes against you it is also for your blessing I'm telling you, it is for your promotion. You know, I tell people, if you lose your job, why are you crying? Why are you crying? It is time for a bigger one. So, when the person comes to you and say, you lost your job, then the person will have moved. <laughs> we are not in that place again. We have changed location. We are moving to a better and a higher place. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I've moved. We have moved. Listen, if you knew my house address last week, if you come here, you will not find me there again. I've changed location. I've moved to a different level. I'm telling you, that's the life that God has given up to us. It's a life where we can speak the wisdom of God. We can speak mysteries. We can speak the manifestations of tomorrow now. And then God's angels start to hear those things and they cause the word of God to work for your advantage. They cause the word of God to work for your blessing, for your increase, for your multiplication, for your testimonies. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Oh, hallelujah. I don't know if you're speaking tongues. Name is your aunt. How many of you speaking tongues? Okay. Speaking tongues. Speaking tongues. Can I have a chair? Let me show him something. Bring it here. Can you hear me? Hold on. Let me teach you something. You know, some people, they only speak in tongues when they come to church. Do you know that? Or they go for a service 
or whatever program or if they are doing prayer meeting are you what I'm saying you can speak in tongues everywhere at every time even if you are in a quiet place let me show you now I can be sitting right now in this place I have a mic but hold on I can speak in tongues like this do you hear what I'm saying? You know it, right? Yeah, you can do that. So even if you are in the market, even if you are in the office alone doing your work, that means as you're doing your work, you can be speaking in tongues. Let me tell you why you must do this. You can't wait for a prayer meeting to speak in tongues. The time will not be enough. Ah, if you want to speak in tongues, you need like five hours. You need like ten hours. So where were you? And you have to go to work eight to five. So wherever you get at the time, you come back home, you're tired. You have to be smart. Don't let the devil cheat you. With job, he put in front of you. It has become a baggage that you are carrying on your head. And your life, no fulfillment, no advancement in the same place. You've got to be wise. You've got to, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. I'm telling you, when you start speaking in tongues, let me tell you what happened to you. You can wake up with a vision. In the night, you will dream about something that will happen to you tomorrow. Are you seeing that? And in fact, let me tell you the first, the three things that will happen to you. I wrote them down on my notes. Let me go there. Um, oh dear Lord, Subaragadaya Shaji. The Spirit of God is telling me something now that is somewhere in this place. That job that you'll be seeking for, the Lord says that it will be yours in the name of Jesus. You actually applied for the job. You actually applied for it. And the Lord said it's yours in the name of Jesus. That's what the Spirit said to me now. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Acts chapter 2 verse 11. Acts 2 11. Let me show you something. You can take it back. Thank you. Acts 2 11. It says, Caris and Anabias, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Listen, anytime tongues come to you, the first thing is that it comes in praise and worship. Are you following? So when tongues land on you the first day, is praise and worship. Let me explain. Speaking in tongues is spiritual codes. I'm going to I'll break it down now. This is what I'm saying now. You have not heard it before. I'm 100 percent sure. Because it's spiritually the same. Now, I said when you start speaking in tongues, is what? Is what praise and what praise and what praise and worship. When it starts speaking tongue, is what talk is what. Now let me explain. Let's do a song, a song like this. Lift him up, lift him up. The Lord is good. I will lift him up. Anywhere I go, I will lift him up. Now, I want to give you this quote. Lift him up is a. Higher is B. Eh? The Lord is good is C. I will lift him up is what? D. Eh? So when you are singing, lift him up, you are singing A, B, A, B, A, B. Then you go to C, D. Then you go back again, A, B, A, B. You go back to what? C, D. That is the arrangement of songs. Are you getting the point? The same way. That's the reason why the people's tongues, you know it. You can even speak their tongues. Why? They are still doing praise and worship. They have not entered. So he goes, Jaragabada, 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 Jaragabada. He's praise and worship. And that is his favorite song in his spirit. Are you getting? You know, you have you have favorite songs, right? 
That's the song that your favorite. Some people, their own favorite song is Spirit is Zerada, Jerada, some Yaba, 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 Yaba. That's their favorite song in the spirit. So they are still on praise and worship. There he is. Praise and worship. When are you going to start speaking? Where? Because you've got to start in praise and worship. Like this service today, you started with praise and worship. Right? Now we are in the world. So you start with praise and worship. You go, Mandara, Then you enter, Zagre, Diga, Sokapaya, Diga, Dezo, Prakero, Jerikase, Nisu, Parada. So if you hear me now, I will speak. You can't tell the pattern. Because in the same way when I'm talking, you can't tell the pattern of my speech. But if I'm singing, you can tell the arrangement. That's why the pianist can't play the chord. But he can't play the chord when I'm talking. Are you following? It says that when you speak in tongues, you speak mysteries. This is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. If you will take it seriously, five years from now, nobody will meet you where you are today. Listen, if you come and meet me five years from now, you will not see me here again. If you come to this place, you will not see me here again. Five years from now, I've already moved. Because why? We know the secrets. And we know how to open the secret fire. Because the secret fire can be dim. You can even die and it was never opened. It's possible. You can be suffering and say, oh God, why me? Why me? And God can't do anything about it. It's only if somebody else uses his own faith for you, for you and help you. But, you know some people, especially if you are young, right? Your parents are always praying for you. Eh? And then your life is going on smooth. You think it's normal. No. They are putting prayer, it's the, what is called prayer bank. They are putting prayer inside your bank account. They are loading it, loading it. One day, there will be no more. One day, you will start making withdrawal. If you start to withdraw prayer from the bank account and you are not depositing, what is going to happen? It will go to 0 0.00. There will be no cover in the account anymore. And then, problem will start. Then you start saying, hey, let's go first find prayer house. Let's do prayer meeting. When you're supposed to be praying, you were chilling. Because everything was going nowhere. You, because you think that, listen, there's no army that goes for training when it's time for war. You can't see the dream and say this to war tomorrow. Let's go out to train. No, they are training already, waiting for the day of war. Because the day of war will come. The evil day will come. It is going to come. But the question is, are you ready? Now is the time to prepare. Now is the time to get ready. Now is the time. Tell somebody, now is the time. In fact, when everything is cool, that is the best time to start to pray. Seriously. Because when the day of adversity comes, you may not even have the strength to pray. But because you have deposited prayer, you can take withdrawal. I'm telling you, and then you will find the situation will work for your favor, will work for your advantage. Can you say amen? So tell somebody, leave the level of praise and worship tongues. And start speaking. Now, let me tell you something. If you are new to speaking in tongues, let me tell you something. When you start, it will be very, very boring. I'll tell you. It will be very, very what? Because, in fact, your mind will start telling you, are you crazy? How can you be saying something you don't understand? Don't you think that's madness? Think about it. Your mind is telling you all these things. All these things in your mind. But then you continue. You know, if you have not opened a tap for a long time, what happens they try to open? It's like those holding this tap that you have to turn. What happens? What happens? It takes time, right? Because of rust, you have to, sometimes you have to even take plier or take this there, plumber too. They roll it and tighten hook it. They now have to push it before it will turn. Am I? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, in all of those things happening, but sometimes we're speaking in tongues, it may be like that. But once the tap opens, 
it will flow like ice water. And then you you start you start wondering how did you do three hours so easy? How do you do five hours so easy? It's because the tap has been opened. Now you have entered into what is called a gosha. You have entered into the river. Now the river is flowing excellently well. Praise God. I said, Praise God. I said, Praise God. I said, Praise God. The Lord is gracious and kind. The Lord is gracious and kind. Brothers and sisters, tell somebody your life is never an accident. Tell another person your life is not an accident. You know, sometimes even parents will say things like, We did not plan for this one. They said it was a mistake. Jonathan, even in that mistake, it is not a mistake. Are you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how you were born. Whether you were born on the streets, whether you were born in the market, whether you were born inside the gutter, whether you were born in the hospital, it doesn't matter. What matters is you and what you want in your life now. You cannot put any blame on anybody. You can't say, oh, the reason why my life is like this is because they gave it to me in Nigeria. I wish my parents gave it to me in the United States of America or Canada or United Kingdom. My life will not be like this. <laughs> this. <laughs> say this country is not going anywhere. I don't think I can stay here anymore. Listen, we are citizens of heaven. I said we are what? We are what? Some of you are not talking. We are what? <laughs> oh, you are not sure. You are still thinking maybe one day you will go to heaven. Now, you are a citizen of heaven now. Not when you get to heaven. Now, the Bible says now we have eternal life. Not when we get to heaven. Now. So we are citizens of heaven. Now, if I'm a citizen of heaven, where should my supply come from? Where should my economies come from? Are you sure? You know, sometimes we say these things, but do we really believe it? That's the question. Do we really accept this truth? Do we really endorse this truth? Do we really believe it? Is it, has it are you fully persuaded about it? It's a question. Jesus said, if you only believe, he says, all things are possible to him that believes. If you only believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you only believe, only believe, all things are possible. Praise God. Glory to God. So, I said, when you pray with the mission of God, number one, you dream what you have prayed. You can write it down. For instance, let's say you saw yourself living in another country. That's the mystery of your life. Number two, when you pray the mystery of God, you receive ideas and you are able to make better decisions. Most of the time, we make decisions in prayer. As we are praying and praying and praying, the Spirit of God gives us clear instruction, clear direction, clear stuff of what to do. For instance, some guys, they are confused of who to marry. You get the point? When they start to pray, they get clarity. It becomes very clear who is the person they're supposed to marry. Praise God. But can I advise you? Can I advise you? Can I advise you? Don't wait on the way you want to get married before you start praying. I am telling you, hello. I said, don't wait on the way you want, you want to marry before you start what? Uh, some people, it's not when they get to the marriage point of their life, they start saying, Pastor, join me in prayer. Because I know I doesn't join me in prayer because there's confusion. They are not sure which one. They are saying there are five. They are ten people. They are confused. 
then this one, he said, this one has this one, who, but this one does not have this one. But I like this one, he said, this person. This one has both of them, but I don't like the way the person is looking. If they can just move this part and put inside this one, they move this guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Praise God. Now, number three. When you pray the mission of God, things change around you to align with what you are doing. Circumstances around you begin to align. They will begin to change in alignment to what you're doing. Listen, if you speak in tongues, you will only move forward in your life. You will only make progress. You will never go backwards. Why? Because you are speaking the wisdom of God. How can I be speaking the wisdom of God and be going backwards? It's not possible. Once I speak the wisdom of God, it always goes in the direction that the Spirit is saying that it should go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you learn something today? Are you very sure? And are you going to apply it? in your life listen god wants you to have the best he wants you to enjoy your life but this is one of the secrets to life enjoyment the thing i'm saying now because let me tell you something life is spiritual eh? you cannot be fighting spiritual things with machine gun you shoot machine gun nothing will happen you can't be handling spiritual things with physical materials. It doesn't work like that. You've got to use spiritual things with spiritual things. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Some people, they go to office, they have used spiritual things to enter that office. And then the boss is being controlled. And everybody is thinking, the person he talks nice. No, it's using something spiritual. You as a Christian, you've got to use your spiritual tools. The Bible says, for the weapons we have are not carnal. It says, but they are mighty to the power of the Holy Ghost. They are mighty through God. And these things can change circumstances. They can change the course of life. They can change destinies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. I want to open your mouth this morning. And thank God for the word you have received. And I want to open your mouth and speak in other tongues. Thank him. Thank him for his word. Thank you for his word. Si baragati ligi baba shati ningru do baba siga raba saya na mungri kiyupyo ni kibo li baragata ya ziko jaya manto barani. Say I will speak the mission of God. Say I will speak the mission of God. And these mysteries will be manifested in my life in the name of the lord jesus lift up your hands and speak in tongues wherever you are now speak in mission of god right now Jenny calls a prati la kere nezo 